हेलो एवरीवन लेट्स कवर रदरफोर्ड्स एटॉमिक मॉडल इन दिस क्लास द फर्स्ट एटॉमिक मॉडल वी आर अवेयर ऑफ इट वाज थॉमसन्स मॉडल हु टोल्ड दैट द एंटायर पॉजिटिव चार्ज इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इन अ स्पेयर ऑफ एटॉमिक डायमेंशंस एंड द नेगेटिव चार्ज इज इम्बेडेड इन सच अ वे दैट attractive and repulsive forces somehow balanced so one very important significant point of this model was that the atom is neutral so positive charge and negative charges they are equal this point is still valid and another was regarding the distribution of all charges in all these atomic model these two points you have to keep in mind one regarding the number of charges and second how are the charges distributed okay so <clears throat> an experiment was performed by giger and marsden we also call it the ford experiment this uh, the results of this experiment were of <clears throat> were uh, explained by rutherford giger and marsden performed this experiment it is in 1911 this is the experimental setup we have a source of alpha particle so this is a lead box s is a source of alpha particle a radioactive material then these two bricks again made up of lead and a narrow opening so that alpha particles basically this beam alpha particles pass into a narrow beam in the form of a narrow beam we call it collimator which collimate the alpha particles into a fine beam this is gold foil thickness of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 meter precisely it was 2.1 into 10 to the power minus 7 and then this is a scale on which we have a detector and two most important parts of the detector is one microscope and one zinc sulfide screen zinc sulfide uh when alpha particles will fall on to zinc sulfide this produces scintillation so sparks and those sparks are studied using microscope okay the purpose of taking a very thin gold foil is to avoid the multiple collisions so in a way we have taken a single layer of atoms so that there are no multiple collisions lead has been taken because of its high absorbing power so that the alpha particles if they are moving in this direction they will be absorbed and only this fine beam will be allowed to fall on the foil okay so L alpha particle source lead collimators thin foil of gold detector with microscope and zinc sulfide screen and this is the scale on which we can move the detector to see how many particles are coming at any particular position and this entire setup is in an evacuated chamber no other particles present to avoid the collision of alpha particle with air molecules okay experiment is the alpha particles were allowed to fall on this cold foil after being collimated into a fine beam by these collimators and the scattered particles they were studied using this detector this detector can be moved on the circular and it was studied that how many particles are coming at one particular angle okay observations are this is a graph number of particles and here is a scattering angle so scattering angle will be the angle between the incident direction and then the direction in which the particle has moved after passing through the foil that will be the scattering angle so most of the particles maximum particles we are getting when the angle is zero it means it's straight and after that number of particles decreases after 90 degree the particles are very less okay so this is a graph between the angle of scattering number of particles it is telling you that maximum particles are going straight and very few particles are suffering large angle scattering so observations were most of the particles pass straight is quite clear from this graph also 
most of the particles pass straight few particles very few particles suffer large angle scattering this is about 1 in 8000 and rarely the particles suffer 180 degree scattering 180 degree means rarely any particle is strikes and then returns it is rare so most of the particles passing is straight few of them around 1 in 8000 suffering an angle of scattering of uh, more than 90 degree and very few have this 180 degree scattering it is rare now if we see these observations and at the time when this experiment was performed the accepted model was that given by Thomson. according to him positive and negative charge both are distributed in the entire atom now if we take that model now let us see whether we can explain all these three observations on the basis of Thomson's model or not. Firstly, it says that most of the particles, it will observe that most of the particles are going straight. Now, if in an atom the positive charge and negative charge is distributed throughout, then the distribution of the positive and negative charges uniform and one alpha particle means it's an assembly of two protons and two neutrons so when alpha particle two protons and two neutrons it is strikes the atom most of the particles going straight means it does not interact with the other charged particles because if it interacts with the other charged particle, then there will be a force. And due to that force, there will be a difference in its trajectory. But if they are going straight, it means it is not interacting with the charged particle. Even if it is experiencing force because of positive negative charge, it's very small. Then it's okay. What was concluded? That most of the space inside an atom is empty this was the first conclusion because if this is correct then it's not possible for the particles to pass straight firstly the scattering will be uniform if the charge distribution is uniform all particles will be scattered uniformly it will not be that some particles will pass straight some particles will suffer large angle scattering and very few but even then whatever it is no particle will ever come back now second observation is that few particles suffer large angle scattering one in eight thousand that's not possible actually to explain this large angle is scattering based on this metal uh, on this model atomic model why because this an assembly of two protons and two neutrons it is much heavier than a single proton or electron so whenever this alpha particle interacts with single proton or electron it can never suffer large angle is scattering proton if we see in comparison to proton this is four times heavier approximately and electron electron mass is 10 raised to the power minus 13 one order and protons mass minus 27 order so it's around 10,000 times heavier so it's not possible a very heavy particle when it strikes a light particle the heavier one will not suffer large angle scattering it will take the lighter one with it if a heavy particle like alpha is suffering large angle scattering or coming back it means there is some charged particle which is two very important points which is positively charged which repels the alpha particle and secondly it is much heavier than alpha particle itself so this observation can be explained only if we take that the positive charge inside an atom is concentrated at some place and almost entire mass is also concentrated at, at that point only 
So, okay, taking all three observations together. Rutherford gave his atomic model. Important points were large empty space inside the atom. Because most of the particles are going straight. Secondly, all positive charge and almost entire mass is at one point and he named it nucleus. So Rutherford gave the concept of nucleus that all positive charge is inside the nucleus and this nucleus is at the center of the atom. This is what Rutherford told. And Apart from these two points, he also estimated the size of this nucleus. How? If this is a nucleus and alpha particles are thrown towards it. So what will happen? If the alpha particle is here, then it may suffer a very small scattering angle. If alpha particle is coming like this, then it is nearer to the nucleus, so more force. So maybe it, it goes like this. Some other particle may, may go like this. And if one is coming head on, it may go back. So most of the particles will go straight because of the small size of the nucleus. And how he estimated the size? He kept on changing the value of the energy of the alpha particles which are sent. If an alpha particle is coming from a large distance, then simply conservation of energy can give us an idea about the size of the nucleus. If an alpha particle is coming, initially it has energy this and when the alpha particle is approaching the nucleus what will happen all this energy gets converted to potential energy it will stop and then will go back if z is the charge on the nucleus 2e charge on the alpha particle upon r using it what he did he kept on varying the value of kinetic energy of the alpha particle with which the alpha particles are approaching the nucleus and calculated this size r. Minimum distance or closest distance of approach will be this. In that case, r will be center to center distance. Center of alpha particle and center of the nucleus. And he estimated it nearly 47 for me it is of the order of 2. when he used alpha particle of value 5.5 billion electron volt then r came out to be around 47 for me we call it femtometer or for me one for me or femtometer is 10 to a minus 15 meter so he calculated this that Roughly, the radius of the nucleus is of this order. Distance of closest approach. Another quantity, he, this is called impact parameter. It's again a quantity which affects the scattering. The scattering angle will depend on the impact parameter. For a large impact parameter, the particle may go straight. And for zero impact parameter, the scattering is the scattering angle will be 180 zero so impact parameter is this distance so distance between the velocity vector of alpha particle and the central line drawn to the nucleus that is the impact so impact parameter distance of closest approach help us to find out 
to estimate the size of the nucleus. This is how it is. Now you can imagine if nucleus is of this order, atom, so it's around 1 is to 10 raised to the power 5. So if I take it 1 millimeter, it comes out to 10 raised to the or 100 meter. So if I consider the tip of alpine, which, which will be around 1 millimeter, then 100 meter around it, that is that term. So you can imagine now the size of a nucleus in comparison to the size of the atom. 100 meter and 1 millimeter. This is the ratio. So it is the reason. Now, now you can explain those observations very easily. If the size of the nucleus is 10 raised to a minus 15, size of the atom is 10 raised to a minus 10, and you are throwing alpha particles, then probability is that they will pass straight. They will not go closer to the nucleus. The probability is very less. So that's why 1 in 8000 was suffering large angle scattering. Most of the particles going straight only. So Rutherford atomic model, he gave the concept of nucleus. Regarding the total charge, is still the same of, uh, uh, point which was there in Thomson's model, that positive charge is equal to the negative charge. Positive charge and mass that is centered at the nucleus. Electrons are around, around it. Now, what did he say about the electrons? Electrons can't be at rest. If they are at rest, they will be pulled towards the nucleus and fall, will fall into that. So electrons are not at rest. Electrons are moving around the nucleus. Just like planets moving around the sun. So the force between them is providing the necessary centripetal force. That's why they are not falling into the nucleus. So positive charge is at the center, which is called the nucleus. Negative charge around the nucleus and moving in orbits. And this is about the size. Size of nucleus, 10 raised to 1 minus 15 order. Size of the atom, 10 raised to 1 minus 10. This is roughly, though the atom size will depend element to element. But this is the order. Okay, now. This model could not explain, or rather Ford could not explain, two objections raised to this model. According to electromagnetic theory, we have done it. Accelerated charge radiates. So, if we have a nucleus and electrons are moving around it, then the motion of the electron is an accelerated motion. So it was objected that if electrons are moving around the nucleus, the motion is accelerated, they should radiate, they should give out electromagnetic radiations. And in the process, they should lose their own energy. And if they are losing energy, the radius of the orbit should keep on decreasing and eventually the electron should fall into the nucleus. So the atom can't be stable. It should come like this. So, he couldn't explain this. Another point was hydrogen spectrum. Hydrogen has just one electron in its orbit. Spectrum means the radiations emitted by any atom. Now, if the electron is moving like this and it is giving out radiation, then these radiations should have all possible values from 0 to a maximum. Suppose the electron has 10 electron volt energy in any one particular. And we are saying it is losing energy continuously. So it means if it comes up to 0, then from 10 to 0, it has been at all possible levels. So energy should decrease continuously. But it doesn't happen actually. In hydrogen spectrum, it has been found that the spectrum, that only certain specific wavelength radiation is emitted. We get radiations 
of specific wavelengths, not all possible wavelengths from maximum to minimum. So variation is not, it is just like that a ball is coming from certain height to this, another way is it is coming through steps. So here, if the ball is coming like this, this we call the discrete variation. It has been some height and then second level, then third level, then fourth level and something like this. But here it has been at all possible positions from here. So in hydrogen spectrum, only certain specific wavelengths have to be found. That's why Rutherford could not explain even that because according to it, it should be continuous variation. He could not explain even the stability of that. And the important points Again, just to summarize, Rutherford ex explained the observations of the experiment performed by Giger and Marsden. Most of the particles going straight, few suffer large angle scattering, 1 in 8000 around, and rarely some particles suffer large angle scattering, like 180 degree returns. Rutherford explained all these observations on the basis of his own atomic model. None of these observations could be explained on the basis of Thomson's model. So Rutherford said that most of the particles are going straight because large space inside the atom is empty and alpha particles suffer large angle scattering because of presence of a very heavy positively charged particle inside the atom. He named it nucleus. So entire positive charge of the atom is centered at nucleus and almost mass also. For the electrons, he said, electrons are around the nucleus but not at rest. They are moving around the nucleus. The force is providing the necessary centripetal force. He also estimated the size of the nucleus. It's of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meter. Two important quantities I have told you, distance of closest approach, the minimum distance to which alpha particle can approach a nucleus and impact parameter. This tells how far alpha particle's velocity vector is from the central line drawn to the nucleus. So that's enough for this class. Thank you.